Hi, this is Roland Lucas, and in this video I'm going to be discussing how therapeutic exercises can be used as a mechanical stimulus to initiate musculoskeletal tissue adaptation and regeneration, leading to increased pain-free function. Previously, I described how restorative mechanotherapy was one of the three primary rehabilitation paradigms. Depending on the category of rehabilitation we're trying to achieve with our patient, our exercises will be different. For example, in a patient with chronic rotator cuff tendinopathy, there are many options for exercise-based treatment. The first one perhaps is no exercise or no movement at all, avoiding moving the arm. Another type of exercise would be exercise to improve the motor control around the scapula. And a third commonly used exercise would be resistance training for the rotator cuff. When trying to decide which treatment paradigm these exercises would be involved in, we need to consider the intent of each individual exercise. In the first case, where we instructed the patient not to move the arm, we're trying to protect the rotator cuff tendons from loading. This would be categorized as tissue healing and protection. When focusing on improving the motor control of the serratus anterior, our intent is biomechanical optimization. And in this case, the use of rotator cuff resistance exercises is intended to initiate tendon tissue regeneration and adaptation. This would be categorized as restorative mechanotherapy. Keep in mind that there is overlap among the treatment paradigms. So one treatment may participate in more than one category. For example, increased rotator cuff strength may improve shoulder biomechanics. To further explore the role of exercises in restorative mechanotherapy, we're going to look at some commonly used exercises for the patellofemoral joint. Resisted clamshells. Loaded 80-20 squat. And resisted leg extension. Clamshells are considered biomechanical optimization only and the leg extension is restorative mechanotherapy only, whereas the 80-20 squat is both. For an exercise to initiate musculoskeletal tissue adaptation and or regeneration, there are a few characteristics. Specific to the symptomatic tissue, of appropriate intensity and mimics normal activity demands. So we want exercises where the mechanical demands are greatest in the symptomatic tissue. For somebody with facet arthropathy, obviously hamstring stretching is not loading the symptomatic tissue significantly. Whereas extension and lying is stressing that area and could be considered restorative mechanotherapy. The intensity of the exercise has to be appropriate so as to initiate adaptation or regeneration without resulting in further deterioration in tissue quality. This is considered the zone of optimal loading. And lastly, we want the type of loading, whether it be tension, compression, or torsion, to be similar to that which the tissue is normally exposed to in everyday activity. Although calf flexibility may play a role in optimizing biomechanics, calf strengthening exercises produce loads much more similar to that which the Achilles tendon is normally exposed to. 
So in summary, we need exercises that target the symptomatic tissue. The type of loading should be similar to the activity demands. Simple isolated exercises are often effective. The exercise needs to allow us to easily calibrate and progress the load. And they need to be intense enough to initiate adaptation. Thank you for watching this video on therapeutic exercises for restorative mechanotherapy. My next video will be exploring the relationship between manual therapy and restorative mechanotherapy.